subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Good afternoon to all of you. I have an opening statement to make. I'll read the statement and then I'll take questions. I believe the statement has been distributed. I'm glad to speak to you exactly 106 days after I last spoke to you. As I stepped out and breathed the air of freedom at 8 p.m. last night, my first thought and prayers were for the 75 lakh people of the Kashmir Valley who have been denied their basic freedoms since August 4, 2019. I am particularly concerned about the political leaders who have been detained without charges. Freedom is indivisible. If we must preserve our freedom, we must fight for their freedom. If we must preserve our freedom, we must fight for their freedom. I'm grateful for the clear and comprehensive order yesterday of the Supreme Court. The order will clear the many layers of dust that have unfortunately settled on our understanding of criminal law and the manner in which criminal law has been administered by our courts. I have never commented on cases that are sub judice and I shall continue to adhere to that principle. To many of your possible questions on the case, the answers can be found in the lucid order of the Supreme Court pronounced yesterday. In the last 106 days, I was strong in spirit and I become stronger because of the following. One, my record as minister and my conscience are absolutely clear. Officers who have worked with me, business persons who have interacted with me, and journalists who have observed me know that very well. Two, my family trusts in God. Three, we have total confidence that the courts will ultimately render justice. Let us leave the matter at that. Let me repeat that. The government is wrong. It is wrong because it is clueless. It is unable to look for the obvious clues because it is stubborn and mulish in defending its catastrophic mistakes like demonetization, flawed GST, tax terrorism, regulatory overkill, protectionism, and centralized control of decision-making in the Prime Minister's office. Please reflect on each one of the charges that I've made. In the days to come, I shall speak, give interviews, and write elaborately on each one of them. Nothing sums up the state of the economy better than the following series of numbers. Eight, seven, 6.6, 5.8, 5, and 4.5. Those are the quarterly growth rates of GDP in the last six quarters. According to the BJP government, these signify Ache Din. 8 to 7 to 6.6 to 5.8 to 5 and 4.5 is Achedin. The third and fourth quarters of 2019-20 are not likely to be any better. We will be lucky to end the year if growth touches 5%. And please remember Dr. Arvind Subramanian's caution that 5% under this government because of suspect methodology, because of suspect methodology is not really 5% but less by about 1.5%. The Prime Minister has been unusually silent on the economy. He has left it to his ministers to indulge in bluff and bluster. The net result, as the economists put it, is that the government has turned out to be an incompetent manager of the economy. Those are the words of the economists. Incompetent managers. The investors of the world and the bankers, the rating agencies 
and the boards of directors of companies read The Economist, The Wall Street Journal and Time. They also pay close attention to numbers. Every number, and I repeat, every number points in the direction of a floundering economy. I don't want to overload you with numbers. Here are some numbers. IIP, 4.6 to 4.4 to 3.9 to 2.4. Credit growth to MSME, 0.9 minus 0 0.4, 2.3, 2 2.7. Manufacturing, minus 1.2, 1.7, minus 1.4, minus 0 0.7. Core sector, 4.8, 4.3, 4.4, 0 0.2. Unemployment, 9.65%, 4.03, 5.14, There are many more. You have reported many of them. Just go back and look at your data. The government alone is in denial. Rural consumption is down, according to the NSSO. Rural wages are down. Producer prices are down, especially for farmers. Daily wage earners get work for no more than 15 days a month. Demand for Magandrega is up. Fast-moving consumer goods, both durable and non-durable, are selling less. Wholesale prices are up. CPI is going up. Onions sell at rupees 100 a kg. Of course, the finance minister, of course, does not eat onions. What do these point to? There is less demand among the people because they have less money and less appetite to consume due to uncertainty and fear. Today, for the first time, the Reserve Bank of India in a matter of seven months, has reduced its forecast from the original 7.4 that was made in February 2019, reduced to 7.2 in April 2019, reduced to 6.1, I think a month ago, and today reduced to 5. I cannot recall an instance understand the difference between cyclical and structural. The UPA lifted 140 million people out of poverty between 2004 and 2014. The NDA has, since demonetization in 2016, pushed millions of people below the poverty line. The economy can be brought out of the slowdown. But this government is incapable of doing that. The economy can be brought out of the slowdown, but this government is incapable of doing that. We think that the Congress has the ideas, but nobody will listen to us. I believe that the Congress and some other parties are better equipped to pull the economy out of the slowdown and push economic growth. But I'm afraid, my friends, we have to wait for better times. Yes, questions? Yes, who's going moderating? Please, he will moderate. Yes. Uh, please keep quiet here, there's five or six of you, please. Yes. The Bharat Petroleum is a scandal. Mr. Jairam Ramesh has already pointed it out some months ago. This buying, asking one PSU to buy another PSU is an accounting maneuvering. Government's coffers are filled. That doesn't make any difference to the organization or the company or the economy. Let us see who buys BPCL. That will give you the clue about where the scandal lies. Anand. What? This question should be put to the Prime Minister, but you will not get an answer. 
there either. If the Prime Minister will not answer your question, how can I answer your question? Global slowdown is responsible to the extent that it affects our exports. But exports are only one of the four drivers of the economy. The other three are entirely the responsibility of the Indian government. Sanjeev ji. I didn't. I was not sarcastic. I was quoting her. Of course, of course, they should have planned in advance. What's the point of um, importing now? When will they arrive? But if the finance minister says, "I don't eat onions." That shows the mindset of this government. Siddharth. You e onion eating people. I don't eat onions. Siddharth. I've said it. I don't think they understand even the difference between cyclical and structural. First, they must have people in the government who understand the difference between cyclical and structural. They had a few people. They banished them. Dr. Raghuram Raban was banished. Rajan. Dr. Ravin Subramani was banished. Dr. Ravin Panagriya was ba banished. Dr. Ujit Patel was banished. People who understood these things were banished by this government. Sir, there is Samia. One, uh, BJP MP uh, in the Lok Sabha recently made a statement saying that uh, GDP only gave in through being 1934 and is going to soon turn redundant. It is no uh, holy grail to go by. What do you make of the statement? I've already answered it. GDP is irrelevant. Protectionism is good. Personal income tax must be cut. Customs duty must be increased. This is the way to make India strong. This is BJP's ideas of reforms. If these are the BJP's ideas of reforms, God save this country. Aditi. Please, please, please. You have to go by the moderator, please. I was told, you can verify this from the party leaders, I was told that the Congress party will oppose the bill. Asim. Please listen to the moderator. You search your heart. Is there not fear today? Every businessman who spoke to economists for that special report said, don't quote my name. Rahul Bajaj is tall enough to say that at a meeting. But there's complete fear everywhere. Every institution is gripped by fear. And the media is no exception. I'm sorry to say this. The media is no exception. You are gripped by fear. Please shed fear. Please speak the truth to power. That is the least that the people of India expect. We buy your newspaper. We subscribe to your channel. We want you to speak truth to power. Please go by the moderator, please. What's he saying? What's he saying? My favorite poet, Saint Trivalluvar, said 2,300 years ago, "Inna seedar kum iniyeve seyakal yenna payatodo salbu." 
he also said inna seidari urutthal avarnana nannayam seidu vidu those who do wrong or evil to you do good to them we will not practice vendetta politics i can only speak for myself we will not practice vendetta politics who practices vendetta politics is for you to decide palvi palvi i am a better man <laughs> to preserve our freedom we must fight for their freedom i i intend to visit jammu and kashmir if the government will allow me to visit jammu and kashmir please listen to the moderator yes, yes. why do they want to follow our legacy they are wiser people they are more intelligent they've got a bigger mandate why do they want to follow our legacy is it because they can't create their own legacy the legacy is what they will leave behind and what they are leaving behind is an economy in ruins yes please yes but not for today that's for another day yes so if you go back yes sir I've said the same thing there is no demand today people don't want to buy because they have less money and they're less confidence about the future it's a well established behavioral fact that when you have less money and you are less confident about the future you buy less you spend less listen to him please if the government believes that the gandhis don't require spg protection that's a cross that the government has to bear let me make that very clear if the government believes that the gandhis do not require or deserve spg protection that is a cross the government has to bear but the gandhis have been extremely graceful and said fine if that's your decision so be it anurag there is a definitional problem is it 5 trillion in nominal terms or is it 5 trillion in the exchange rate terms so leave that definitional problem out yes sir day before yesterday dr c rangarajan former governor reserve bank former chairman economic advisory council has said it will take us 8 years at the current rate of growth to achieve 5 trillion so let the mos finance please invite dr rangarajan please give them your channel or paper let them debate it let the mos finance debate dr rangarajan I'm shocked. I'm ashamed. Yesterday, in one newspaper, I found six incidents of rape and lynching. In one paper and one day, six incidents of rape and lynching. Shameful. Shameful that a section of our people 
think that they can get away with these acts of impunity. It's a complete breakdown of law and order in many parts of India. What is the police doing? Where is the fear of law? Sanjay. Shameful. It's not so confusing as you think. It can happen. Economic growth can slow down. Demand can slow down. Simultaneously, prices can go up because of one, fallen production as a result of fallen investment, hoarding, illegitimate activities. It can happen. So it's not so confusing. Uh, apparently it is contradictory, but it's not so contradictory. The government, if it's a competent manager, will be able to handle it, will be able to manage it. I'm not saying there has to be an overnight um, miracle, but you must know how to deal with each one and bring the situation under control. Yes, please. I don't comment on my case. And I've been told, please don't comment on your case. Yes, please. Yeah, this one. Yes. No, I won't draw a parallel. As far as the economy is concerned, the reason is incompetence. As far as Kashmir is concerned, the reason is arrogance. In Kashmir, it is a ill-thought-out, ill-founded, ill-intentioned design and policy to suppress the basic freedoms of the people. In the economy, it's simply ignorance, incompetence. We have to wind up now, last couple of questions. I can't comment on what the RBI said about monetary policy because I've not read the policy. I only know the conclusion. So you'll have to give me time to read that. Last question. This is a desperate move. The government is going to face a huge fiscal deficit. It will be so huge that all of us will be astounded. The only way they can fill the gap is either to sell so-called strategic assets or to raid the RBI once again. They've already raided the RBI once and they got away with about a lakh and 60,000 crore. Whether they can raid the RBI once again this year, I don't know. So the only alternative they have is a so-called strategic sale. It's a fire sale. It is a distress sale. It is a desperate sale. What's that? What's the other question? Last question. Last part. Last part. Last part. Oh. See, I was always strong in spirit. 
I'm now stronger, I think. But I've also become stronger in body. Let me give you a hint. Sleeping on a wooden board without a pillow strengthens your neck and spine and back. <laughs> my spine is stronger, my neck is stronger, my head is stronger. Last question. The students are absolutely right. Please listen here. The students are absolutely right. In a, in a welfare state, in a welfare state, please go down, madam. Please sit down. In a welfare state, higher education should be totally free. I agree. We are not in a position to make higher education totally free. If higher education is not totally free, you must only charge reasonable fees, which is why JNU is an exemplar. JNU, IIT, IIMs are exemplars. They are institutions of great eminence, but charge reasonable fee. Now, if you raise the fee in the Hindu every day, there are two students writing a column in the Hindu, page number four or so. Each student says, if the fees are raised, I have to give up my studies. What have they done to this? Ideally, higher education must be totally free. Since we have not reached that stage, fees must be reasonable. I fully support the agitation of JNU, IIMC, and other institutions where they are protesting the sharp increase in tuition and hostel fees. My sympathies are entirely, and my party's sympathies are entirely with the students. What's the question? He's asking that our Mali party has given some concessions mm, mm, to mm, mm. later affect the Delhi economy. The economy of Delhi you are asking for votes on the Ahmadi party? <laughs> no, what are you? I am asking what would be the effect on the economy of Delhi. Economy of Delhi? See, these these steps don't affect the economy of Delhi. They may improve the infrastructure of Delhi. Economy of Delhi is decided in one room called the Prime Minister's office. You will not be allowed there. I will not be allowed there. So don't worry. It's beyond our capacity. Thank you. Have a good day.